Hey guys, Zangus, and Zang going to give you a review of the Nikon D3200 DSLR. So in this review, I'm going to go over all of the specs, and also if this camera is right for you, and also the features, and the value, and also everything else that you need to know. So starting off with the specs, it's got a giant sensor which is 24.2 megapixels, so it can take huge raw photos at 6016 by 4000. So the capabilities of this camera is impressive, compared to the design and size as it's just 6 inches tall and 9.1 inches with a lens. However, it is 505 grams and that's with the 18 to 55 millimeter standard lens. Of course, you've got autofocus and manual focus as well. In auto mode, there's amazing 11 autofocus points which is gonna be really fantastic for fast action shots. Of course, on the 3200, Nikon have made it very easy to switch between the two which makes it really easy and quick as well. So this was what it looks like using the autofocus on the camera. It is very quick auto-focusing and taking a shot can also be very quick as well. So the Nikon 3200 is an upgrade from the Nikon 3100 and one of the big differences is that the Nikon 3200 can shoot at 4 FPS where the 3100 can shoot at 3 FPS. So a really big advantage of the manual focus is that it gives you a lot more flexibility and you can really take advantage of it when it comes down to photography. A feature I really like is that you can use either autofocus or manual focus in video as well. Because of this in both photos and videos you get an excellent depth of the field. This depth of field can be used in countless situations and it really makes it different from other different types of cameras like a video camera. When it comes down to the video on the 3200, there isn't that many different modes and settings, however I'll get onto that in a minute. A real advantage of a digital DSLR is that you can use the 3 inch LCD screen on the back if you don't feel like using the viewfinder. Also having a 3 inch LCD screen on the back makes it really good for viewing photos and also settings as well. A nice feature that's in almost all Nikon DSLR cameras is that when you go to use the viewfinder the camera will automatically turn off the LCD display. Of course the simple reason for this is to save battery life. The only problem I have with the LCD screen is that I find it's just not big enough and it's not clear enough as well. While for some the screen is absolutely perfect, I find that it's not big enough and the real problem I have is that it's not flip out. The reason I'm saying this is because I frequently use DSLR cameras with a flip out display and I find that when you're not using a camera with a flip out display it means that you have to estimate whether you're in the frame or not. This pretty much means when you record yourself, you pretty much have to stop the video every single time and you have to replay the previous video to make sure that you're in the frame. I find this really frustrating, but of course if you're not planning on videoing yourself with this camera, then you don't need to worry about this. However, if you're looking for a similar camera for things like vlogging, then I'd recommend the Canon SX50. And also if you feel like you need to adjust the brightness on the camera, then that is easy to do with the settings. Another feature is that the Nikon has several different timers for two and 10 seconds and also you can use a wireless remote as well. I think this is a nice little feature that Nikon have added because firstly the remote is actually really cheap and also it makes it really good for self portraits as well. The best thing is that it doesn't use Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, it just uses an infrared signal so you don't need to worry about using any internet for this. The only problem I have with it is that it's quite inaccurate and you have to make sure that you perfectly point it at the camera. Again another feature on almost all DSLRs is a dial and this makes it really easy for switching between different modes. This way is pretty much the best way to guide around your camera and if you feel that you need to switch to a different light setting then this is really easy to do. Also the camera supports up to 64GB SD cards as well. As soon as you turn the camera on it will also notify you if you don't have the SD card in which I find really useful. On the side of the camera we've got several different ports for external accessories. This is really useful for using external microphones and the other external accessories as well. You can have the option of adding Wi-Fi to this camera but that costs an extra £45 and that includes you have to constantly use a wireless adapter in the side of the camera as well. A small problem I found is that if you have the camera upside down it's quite difficult to take out the battery simply because you can't slot it out and there isn't enough room which means you have to turn the camera over but this isn't really a problem. But to be honest I would have thought that having the battery in the side of the camera would have been a better solution. Of course you've also got the screw for many tripods as well and also the battery is fairly small but actually gives quite a lot of charge for photos and videos. To sum it up the photos taken on the 3200 are amazing. You can currently get a Nikon 3200 on Amazon for £260 which is cheap for almost all SLRs and what you get is actually really great photos with excellent depth of field and amazing picture quality. 
The fact that it has 11 autofocus points really means that when you have fast action shots it can truly take some stunning photos. A nice thing about these types of results is that you really can't get them on any other type of device. You can't really get anything close on a smartphone or a video record camera. Now going over all of the problems with the 3200 would take too long, but one of the main problems I have is that the auto sensitivity can be quite annoying because the results can sometimes mean that you get darker photos. This also means that the lighting conditions in videos as well can also be very low, but to be honest, this is just something that needs to be controlled with the manual settings. The favourite thing about DSLRs is that you can really get some amazing results and you can get so much detail in just one photo. The only problem with these huge detailed photos is that they take up quite a lot of storage on your memory card. Video quality on the 3200 is also impressive and again the best feature about it is truly the depth of field. If you want to find out more about the video quality of the 3200 then you can just find my link here and that is an entire video dedicated to the video quality. So the Nikon 3200 really is a camera for amateur photographers that are trying to get into DSLRs. When it comes down to photos and videos you really are going to get great results for what you pay for. Overall the Nikon D3200 is a great camera. It's good value, the only problem is that it's quite heavy and also it's quite large as well. While it is expensive, it doesn't have Wi-Fi, GPS and isn't resistant to weather. So that is the full review of the Nikon 3200. Be sure to give it a thumbs up and thanks for watching. Hey guys, it's Angus and today I'm going to give you an unboxing of the Samsung Galaxy Note 4. So this is a really recent phone as it was released in September 2014 and I finally managed to get my hands on it and I'm really excited because it's got some amazing specs. In May 2013